From here, head north and cross the traffic lights to the opposite side of both Victoria and Russell Streets. That is, you should end up on the diagonal corner of the intersection. On the corner is our next destination, the Trades Hall building. In Power Without Glory, Frank Hardy's fictional book loosely based on the life of John Wren, he writes about the Trade Hall robbery in 1915 and the role Squizzy Taylor, who you will hear more about later, played in the crime. The premise of this part in the novel is that West, Hardy's name for Wren in the book, is after control of the Labour Party and some of the unions, and steals the account books and results of a recent ballot in order to do this. Hardy describes Taylor as, quote, a liar, a braggart, and a cold-blooded killer when the odds are in his favour. His word was law in the Melbourne underworld, and no wonder. He has risen to a position of power with John Wren's secret protection, and by dint of cunning and treachery. He controlled Melbourne's biggest two-up schools and had under his sway a large gang of shopbreakers, pickpockets and murderers. End quote. But back to the robbery. On the 1st of October at 1am, three men, Richard Buckley, John Jackson and Alexander Ward, were found in the Melbourne Trades Hall building attempting to rob the safe by four policemen. After a volley of 26 shots, of which there are numerous bullet holes that can still be seen today, Constable David McGrath was shot dead. During a previous robbery on eight hours day the same year, thieves had made off with over 400 pounds. However, the morning after the robbery, the safe was searched and found to contain only 21 pounds. Jackson, the safe breaker of the group, was found guilty of the shooting and executed in January 1916. Buckley, despite his record of violent crime, swore at the trial he only fired his revolver in the air and never hit anyone. After three trials, Ward and Buckley were finally convicted on the lesser charge of committing a felony, to which they were sentenced to five and six years imprisonment respectively. It is here that we can see Taylor's involvement, as according to James Morton and Susanna Lobez in Gangland Australia, quote, it is not clear whether Taylor was present at the shooting of Constable David McGrath at the Melbourne Trades Hall in 1915, but he was certainly involved in the aftermath, end quote. Taylor had extensive experience in rigging juries and it is thought that his influence was felt in this particular case. Whatever the outcome, it meant that Taylor had a faithful disciple in Buckley, something that led to Buckley's execution for his involvement in a robbery organised by Taylor in 1923.